Welcome to the Summer Institute with Kevorkian Center and CLACS, the Center for Latin American and Caribbean Studies. My name is Peter Lucas. I teach here at CLACS. Uh, I teach a spring seminar on human rights in Latin America. I also teach over at Tisch in the School of Arts. I teach uh, poetic documentary filmmaking. And I also teach over at the New School in the Graduate Program of International Affairs. Uh, my repertoire of classes is mainly based around human rights and media, uh, but also documentary film, especially experimental and product documentary films. And I'm a filmmaker myself, uh, which I'll show you in a second. Um, I'm coming to you from the conference room at Clax, which is right across the street from Washington Square Park and uh, the windows are open. And so throughout our session today, you might hear dogs barking, there's a dog park right across the street and musicians playing and you might hear the park coming through the windows. Uh, so it's a summer's day. Uh, what I'd like to do with you this afternoon is to have a workshop, a very practical workshop about youth media and give you a kind of a template about how you might run a youth media project or design a youth media project. And the, the, the focus of the session today is what we might call the ethics of care. And I'll explain that in a minute. But first, in order to situate youth media, uh, I wanna talk a little bit about uh, the four things that I do try to do as a professor and the four things that I want my students to leave my classes with. So the first thing that I'm interested in helping students work on is human rights uh, and documentary practice. And what I mean by that is when the students start to develop their digital portfolio, uh, they wanna work on human rights projects. And I want them to understand the history of documentary practice the ethics and the strategies that we use, the politics of representation, um, the different modes of documentary that we can choose from. And so my students quite often work on a lot of documentary projects. They wanna begin to build a portfolio. And the second aspect is I want the students to um, package their documentary projects and what I mean by packaging. One question I'm always asking my students, posing to the students is, what is the difference between the dissemination of information and the transformation of information? And what I mean is, let's say you make a documentary film about child labor in Bangladesh. And that film plays in the film festival circuit it might even have a, a run on public television. And that film, as good as it is, could vanish in a year after it does its run. But if you package the film with a great website, with different components to the website, such as, well, here's all the information you need to know about child labor. There's a lot of information about child labor. And Here's all the people that work, the network of people that work on child labor, not just in Bangladesh, but from a global perspective. Here's some educational ideas, how you can use this film in a classroom, formal education, non-formal education, popular education. And finally, here's a social action plan or 10 things you can do to get involved with child labor. We call that packaging in these days, when you go to fund your documentary film, especially if it's about human rights or social justice, you're not gonna get that film funded unless you have what we call an audience engagement project attached to the film. And that means how can this film not just disseminate information about child labor, but how can it have, be part of the change process and the social transformation process to, to change the violations associated with child labor? So we call that packaging, audience engagement. And my students study that. And many of them are really happy to realize that 
not only do many NGOs, human rights organizations have media projects, but they also have human rights educators and peace educators working on packaging media for change and transformation. So that's the second component. There's the human rights component, making media projects about human rights, then there's the packaging. A third aspect, which is what we're gonna talk about today, is participatory media. How do you run and design and help people tell their own stories? Now, participatory media can be thought of as an umbrella. And underneath that umbrella, there are many different media projects which share a couple of things in common. One is the media is made from below and it's resisting and challenging and trying to change what we might call dominant media, mainstream media. And uh, what we mean by that is citizen journalism platforms, youth media, which we're gonna talk about today, media with the elderly, indigenous media, which we'll show an example of in a little bit, um, visual, visual inclusion projects, digital inclusion projects, pirate radio, community radio, all of these participatory media projects, which come from below and are challenging mainstream media. That's the third thing that I try to train my students to do. It's not enough just to make media about human rights, package media, but it's also great to help people tell their own stories and everyone has the right to tell their own stories. So that's the third aspect. And then the fourth aspect is what I call the poetics of witnessing. And I want my students to think of themselves in an experimental mode and to realize their passion projects. And I teach a whole class called experimental filmmaking, the poetics of witnessing. And as a filmmaker, this is what I particularly work on or what I'm working on these days. I'll show you an example in a second. When the students begin to develop a digital portfolio, people are gonna to wanna to see, okay, what's your human rights projects? And these are the projects that I've worked on. Um, here's, an, here's, a, here's a project about packaging media that I've worked on. Here's the participatory media where I was one of the designers and educators. And here's my passion projects. Here's my experimental projects. And the, that together creates a, a digital portfolio that I'm trying to get the students to realize. And, uh, and these days, just to give you a little bit about myself and what I'm working on, I've been working on a, a very ambitious project. It's this year, 2021, is the 700th anniversary of Dante's passing and the complete publication of the Divine Comedy, the, the Inferno, Purgatory, and Paradise. And I'm making three films to go with all three of those very, very famous books, The Inferno, Purgatorio, and Paradiso. The second part of the, the trilogy, uh, the Purgatory part is finished and it's playing in film festivals right now. And it opens in New York next week at the Cinema Village at the Manhattan Film Festival. And it's a film that it took me four years to shoot. It, everything is shot on the Staten Island Ferry as the boats go back and forth between Lower Manhattan and Staten Island. And while the boats, everything was shot during winter storms. So the whole film takes place during the winter. And throughout the film, as people are going back and forth, uh, passages from Purgatorio are read, evoking kind of spiritual passage. Film is prayer kind of aspect to Dante's famous book about Purgatory. And let me just show you the trailer. It's just two minutes. And give you an example of what we mean by poetic filmmaking. I'm going to share my screen. And And there we go. Let me play you the trailer of this of this film. And hopefully you can hear it.
just as travelers, absorbed in thought, when they overtake strangers on the road, turn to them without stopping. So coming behind us with more speed and passing on, a crowd of souls, silent and devout, gazed at us with wonder. And as I said, that's a feature length film. And uh, passages from Dante's Purgatory are read throughout the film. Uh, I'm in post production right now on the Inferno part of the film, uh, which was shot here in New York, and Paradiso, the Paradise part of the film, which was shot in various gardens in Rio de Janeiro. I, I should point out that my specialty at, at Clax is Brazil where I also work and teach and uh, realize several of my projects. So that's an example of poetics. And, uh, and that's the four things that I'm trying to do with students is human rights, documentary practice, participatory media, packaging, and experimental poetic films. So let's talk about participatory media. That's our focus for today. Let me begin by telling you about a workshop that I do and walk you through this workshop. If we were to do this workshop together, it would take an hour and a half, two hours. So I'm gonna walk you through it very quickly. And uh, I give this workshop to you. I hope that you'll use it, uh, improve on it, improvise off of it, run with it, change it, and maybe it'll inspire you. I know that when, when I've done this with my students, my students who are teachers immediately run out in the schools and do this workshop. And they, and they say it's, it's, a, it's a great way to, to think about youth media and rights. So the name of this workshop is A Perfect Summer Day. And the workshop goes like this. And I teach a course on how to run and design youth media, participatory media projects. And, and if we were taking that course, this would be the first, this is the first thing we do the first day of the semester. So I asked students to take out a piece of paper and remember, try to remember when you were a child and try to recall a perfect summer's day. Now I know that some people live in parts of the world where there's no such thing as summer, but we've all experienced days where we, we don't have school, we have vacation. And so think of a perfect summer day and write a paragraph or two about what you were doing who you were with, your senses. What were the, de the details? What, what was this perfect summer day about? And so students take 10, 15 minutes and they, they write this, they write this perfect summer day up. The second part of the workshop, once everyone has meditated and thought about this day, is to turn to your neighbors and to share this perfect summer's day. And usually in, in classes like at NYU, students come from everywhere, all, all parts of the world. And people, you have to build it. This is a great I, I, way to start to begin a learning community in your class. And people turn to their, their partners sitting next to them and they, they, they share their perfect summer's day. And that can take 10, 15 minutes. The third part of the workshop is, um, is to pause everyone and say, listen, now that you've shared this perfect 
summer stay. Is there a, a list that you could create? A list of what we might call childhood essentials, things that we need for this perfect summer day. And while you're still comparing your, your different days, try to generate a list of essential things. And so students turn to each other again and they try to realize uh, particular aspects of this perfect summer day that are really important and they generate a list of, uh, of essentials. The fourth part of the workshop is to pause the whole class and say, well, now that you've created this list of essential things, do you think all children in the world are privy to these essentials or have access to these essentials or can enjoy these essentials? And if so, I want you to change your language and rewrite these essentials as some kind of guarantees or some kind of um, some kind of rights that everyone should have access to these. But change your language, rewrite your essentials to guarantee that all children could have them. And now the class does this in, in, in a real seminar. This all takes time and we're, we, you could easily be in an hour in the class if you give everyone a lot of time. The fifth part of the workshop, once everyone has rewritten their essentials and changed their language is to hand out the UN, United Nations Convention on the Rights of the Child and to ask everyone to compare the Convention on the Rights of the Child with their childhood essentials, which they've rewritten as guarantees. And now we're going to check those guarantees with the CRC or what we call the Convention on the Rights of the Child. And lo and behold, the students will realize that they in fact just wrote the Convention on the Rights of the Child. And then you do a map around the room where you get people up to the board and people introduce themselves and they talk about their perfect summer day, and where they come from and what was special to them and how that created a list of essential things and how that essential list was transformed into guarantees and rights and then was cross-checked against the convention of the rights of the child. And you realize that many of the, the articles in the convention you just wrote. It's important to reflect on this workshop and what, was, what this workshop was about, but let me give you a few clues. The first thing that I wanted to do with this workshop was to impress upon students that human rights Convention on the Rights of the Child, for, for instance, can be approached affirmatively, positively. Usually we approach human rights from a negative perspective, the classical negative paradigm. We have a case study and we get out the Universal Declaration of Human Rights or the, or the CRC, and we circle everything that's wrong. And we say, boy, we gotta change this and we gotta change that. And that's a negative paradigm. But in fact, you can approach human rights affirmatively from a positive perspective. This is important because many young people, for example, say young people in the favelas of Rio and Brazil, they're sick and tired of talking about what's wrong. They wanna approach human rights from an affirmative perspective. They wanna value rights and approach them positively. So, that's the first part of this. That's really important for people in participatory media projects. They are not necessarily, not all the time interested in approaching rights from a negative paradigm. They often want to approach them positively. So this is a great way to begin that conversation. Another aspect of this workshop is that international human rights from the United Nations 
are not these big legal things downloaded from above. They come from us. We wrote them. We write the art of all the international treaties and covenants and declarations. They come from us. They come from people. They come from our lived praxis in the world, our lived experience in the world. They're not these big legal fluorescent things which are distant and they come from us. It took the United Nations was proposed by the country of Poland to create the Convention on the Rights of the Child. And it took 10 years of very serious meetings to create this incredible document. But it came from us as people. So there are many different other aspects of this of this workshop that we could talk about and reflect on. Maybe we could do it in the second part when we have a more of a Q&A, the second part of this meeting. But once we reflect on the different aspects of this workshop, I show them an example of a video letter. And what I mean by a video letter is that a group of young people get a, get a video in the mail and in, in, in the case of the one I'm going to show you, it's a group of children in the Amazon uh, from, from the indigenous group, the Yiping. And they received a video letter from a group of kids in the mountains of Cuba. And the kids in Cuba made a video of their lives and talked about everything that they do in everyday life. And they, they made this video and they sent it to the kids in the Amazon who were associated with this NGO called Video in the Villages that works on indigenous media in different groups in the Amazon. And the Yiping kids saw this video and they got the cameras and made a film about themselves. And then they not only sent it back to the kids in Cuba, they sent it out to the world. Uh, a letter from the Yiping children to the world is the name of this video. And uh, it's on video on Vimeo on demand, you can, you can run it. And, uh, and I screened this for the students in the class and we realized that everything the kids in the Amazon are talking about are the things that they just wrote about in their perfect summer day, in their childhood essentials. And uh, there are many different ways to do youth media projects, but the video letter strategy is probably the fastest startup that you can do. Uh, I know this because we've done video letter projects in several places around the world, including here in New York. And from my experience, once young people see an example of a video letter, they're, they're just like, give us the cameras. We, we know what to do. Uh, it's not that you can't run them through workshops leading up to that moment. And I'll talk about that in a second. But if you need a fast startup for a youth media project, you show kids video letter and hand them the cameras and they're gonna know exactly what to do and what to show. So let me give you an example. Um, uh, I'm just gonna show a, a trailer on YouTube and the quality is not that good, of course, on YouTube. I'm gonna share the screen and show you a few minutes of, of the kids in the Amazon. Uh, doing a video letter. But if you wanted to watch this with really a great stream, with really high quality, it, it's, it's on Vimeo on demand. But let me, let me share the screen and let me show you a few minutes of what we mean by a video, video letter. Get it, young Get it, Edward. 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 Get it, Edward.
Tomok. Well, that's a few minutes of this very famous film, A Letter from the Yiping Children to the World. It's probably the most famous example of, youth, of, a, of a youth video letter project. And, and we've started many projects by in, all over the world by showing this video. And students, young people watch this video and they are, it, it, it has this kind of a sweetness to it. It's a very frontal perspective where young people say, well, it's a Saturday morning. This is what we do on Saturdays and we want to introduce you to these people. And this is, this is how we play. This is how we go to school. These are the chores we work on. We do this, we do that. And it's, it's a perfect matchup with the convention on the rights of the child. And, uh, and, and the students at the end of, the, of this initial workshop realized they were all not that different from each other. In fact, uh, the perfect summer day. One, give me, I'll give you an example. One thing that students quite often write about on a perfect summer day is a relationship with water. And the kids in the Amazon talk about that exact same relationship they have with their river, with the water. And you realize that we're, we're not that different. And that's the opening workshop I do. Now, uh, I want to tell you about how you might approach um, teaching for a youth media project, for a video letter project. And I will end this session with an example of teenage girls in Afghanistan uh, who saw this exact video of the kids in the Amazon and they made their own video letter project. They had a few things they wanted to say about what it's like to be a young woman in Kabul in Af Afghanistan. But one way that we run our workshops in youth media, and again, I hope you'll just improvise off of this, this sketch that I'm about to give you and run with it, improvise, change it. I hope it's inspiring for you. There's a book that I love very much called The Challenge to Care written by an educational philosopher named Nell Noddings, N-O-D-D-I-N-G-S. And Nell Noddings wrote this book in the early 1990s when I first read it, when I was back in graduate school. And I read this book. And even though Nell Noddings didn't have anything to say about youth media, I read this book and just light bulbs went off and I said, oh my. This is how, this is a paradigm. This is how you run a youth media project. In a nutshell, what Nell Noddings talked about in her book, The Challenge to Care, she said, well, schools were designed by men. And that's the problem. And men designed education and schooling with boundaries and levels and boxes and you go from one 45 minute block to another and you go from one grade to the next and fields are separated from each other it's all boxed and striated and she said that's that's not exactly how schooling might have turned out if women had designed it. 
she proposes what she calls the circles of care. And she said, if women had designed schools, we might be talking about circles of care instead of all these boxes, and fields, and subjects. And she threw out these ideas and she said that perhaps the first thing we should teach about in a school is care for the self. Formal schooling has very little to say about care for the self. But yeah, we know that's a, that's a really important issue for young people. And Nodding says, this is the first thing we should be teaching about is care for the self. The second thing perhaps is care for those we're intimate with, our very close friends, our family members. Why should we care for them? Again, formal schooling doesn't have much to say about this. The third thing Nottings proposes is, why should we care for people we know, but we're not exactly intimate with? Maybe they're classmates of ours, maybe we go to school with them, maybe we work with them, we know them, but were, we're not on intimate relationships with them. Why should we care for them? The fourth circle of care, which is very challenging for young people, especially from a human rights perspective, is why should we care for people we don't know? Why should we care for people on the other side of the world? Why should we care for young people in Afghanistan? A lot of young people in New York might say, well, we have nothing in common with these people. Why should we care for them? Let me pause before I tell you more about Nell Nodding Circles. There's a film that came out around 2000, right before the explosion of social media. It was called Chain Camera. And the film is about uh, a high school in Los Angeles, big high school, big public high school, where the filmmakers gave uh, 10 random kids in the first week of school in September, 10 video cameras and said, film whatever you want for a week. And at the end of that week, hand us back the, the, the videotapes and pass the cameras to 10 other random students and then we'll give them film and they film for a week and so on and the cameras get passed on. And that's hence the reason why the film is called Chain Camera. And at the end of the year, they edited a film. And so it's, it's interesting. There, there are dozens of ways that you can run youth media projects. But this is one way is you give the kids no training, no training at all. You just give them the cameras and watch what happens. So that's a strategy, it's a legitimate strategy, just give them the cameras. And of course, this is what's happening by and large with social media today. But this, this film was made right on the cusp of the social media explosion. And it was interesting what the students filmed in John Marshall High School in Los Angeles. They didn't get out of the inner circles, meaning they were very interested in themselves, the people they were intimate with and the people that they knew. We might call those the inner circles. Uh, if you graph nil nodding circles on a spiral matrix, which we'll, we'll get out to the outer circles in a second, the inner circle would be care for the self. And then you spiral out a little bit more and you get care for those we're intimate with, those we know spiral out a little further, those we don't know. If you keep spiraling out with nil nodding circles, you would get for, well, why should we care for buildings? Why should we care for trees? Why should we care for water? Why should we care for things? Why should we care for a pencil? What is, what is a pencil? Where does it come from? Why should we care for that? Why should we care for ideas? I read Nell Nodding's book and I immediately grafted on a spiral matrix. And I thought to myself, oh, this is how you teach youth media. You run your workshops based on these circles of care and you plot them in a spiral. And the reason I thought this because uh, there are youth media projects here in New York 
several really good youth media projects where the students work on human rights and social justice issues. And I know this because one of my sons, one of my kids, my own kids who was struggling with high school participated in Educational Video Center, one of these projects in New York where you leave school in the middle of the afternoon and you go to EDC and you learn how to make documentary films and, and you get high school credit for it. But the EDC films that the kids make are all about human rights, all about social justice, the outer circles. And I know my son resisted that because he wanted to be in the inner circles he wanted to be making a film about his girlfriend in Central Park on a spring day. And meanwhile, they were all out there making films about social justice and human rights. But if you give kids cameras with absolutely no training, unlike the EDC model, they're going to stay locked into the inner circles. So I thought if I plotted Nell Nodding's spiral, her, her circles of care on a spiral, you could run young people through workshops we could organically get to the outer circles. So for example, when we run a youth media project, say in the favelas of, of Rio, let's say we're doing a photography project. The first workshop kids are gonna do is they're gonna come back and they're gonna come back with photographs about themselves. Why should we care for the self? And then the next workshop, a couple of days later, they have to go out and photograph or film those that they're intimate with. And the kids come back with these incredible projects about their grandmother cooking dinner or somebody who cares for them, loves for them. And then the third workshop is they have to go out and make a film about someone they know, but they're not exactly intimate with. And then the fourth workshop, maybe two weeks into the program, let's say you have eight weeks to run a youth media project, in the, set, the fourth project was they, they would have to go out and make a film or a video about someone they don't know. And then they follow the spiral out and they get to the outer circles where they're making films about animals or, 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 or trees or the environment or the, the built environment. And they finally get the ideas. If you do this just right, this spiral, let's say you have an eight week project, you should spiral all the way out by the sixth week. And that allows you a couple of weeks to spiral back and students can come back and spiral back and choose any one of those nodes that they want to explore a little bit more. For example, I remember this one young man in a project in, the, in Rio who was very, very concerned about how dogs are treated in favela communities in Rio, basically dogs are security. It's a cheap kind of security at night and they're not really taken care of that, that well. And he, his whole photographic portfolio was about the mistreatment of dogs. So he, he did that on his way out. And then when he had a chance to go back in, he came back in and he chose that note to develop his final portfolio. And then the people running the workshop were able to actually link him up with groups that care about these kind of issues. And so there's a transformational quality involved in that. But the point is, is that the spiral of care by Nell Noddings is a very interesting way to organically flow from the inner circles to the outer ones and to allow students to, out, to come back in and revisit the inner circle if they so choose. So back to that film chain camera in Los Angeles, the kids never got out of the inner circles or the opposite, a youth media project in New York where the kids are pushed into the outer circles but they really wanna be in the inner circle. So how do you organically bring those together? And that's why I offer Neil Nodding's book, The Challenge to Care and her idea of these circles of care I'm gonna share the screen and show you something on my laptop, uh, just a very simple graph to show you what I mean by that. And there you see, that's a very, very simple spiral matrix how you might 
design a youth media project. How you run your workshops and how you spiral all the way out and how you allow students to spiral back in. That was made by one of my students. So when we run youth media workshops, this is just how we do it. There are many, many different ways you can run youth media workshops, but we run our workshops based on the spiral, spiral of care. And uh, I'm happy to send the students uh, a kind of a primer essay that I wrote about this and, uh, and, and have you read it if, if you, we, we can, Give you the links and I can, we can send out this paper if you're, if you're interested. And then finally, um, we worked with uh, teenage girls in Afghanistan who themselves went through the, the workshops in the spiral of care. And it's a great way to get students ready to actually do a video letter project because when the teenage girls in Afghanistan were after they, they were being workshopped for about a year in this, this project. Uh, once, they, once they went through the spiral, they had something they wanted to talk about, not just everyday life, but they wanted to talk about human rights and specifically women's human rights and how hard it is to actualize and realize women's human rights from a young woman's perspective in Afghanistan. And so they not only made a video letter about everyday life, but they wanted to talk about human rights. And we will end the workshop with a little bit of from, from this Kabul Cards project. And then when we meet again, we can have more of a question and answer about uh, human rights, the ethics of care, even critical pedagogy if you want, or peace education, because when I teach my youth media course, what's underneath youth media is human rights, the ethics of care, peace education, human rights education, and, uh, and, 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 and of course, critical pedagogy, which we can talk about later. So I'm going to share the screen and we're gonna end our session on the Kabul cards with the teenage girls and I hope you found this workshop interesting and I look forward to meeting you again and uh, to have more of a question and answer until then. Thank you. مدت دو سال میشه که ما از زندگی خود فیلم میگیریم و در این فیلم شما بخش های از زندگی ما رو تماشا خواهید کرد. شی که میخوانم رشته درام است سال دوم دانشگاه هستم گفتم که چرا رشته درام انتخاب نکنم کلاگی با ما گفتن که یک رشته بچگانه است و این چیزی که من میخواستم اونا نشان بدم که این تنها رشته بچه ها بودن نمیتونن دختران میتونن بخونن و همچنان میخواستم که هدفم و هدفم در زندگی میسه که باید کار کنم تلاش کنم و تا یک زندگی خوب برای خودم و بر دیگر رو جور کنم وضعیتی که فیران برای زنات افغانستان از میل قبول ندارم برای جای قابل قبول نیست میخوایم یک بخش از اینمی تغییر باشم سه چیز امدر ما در این فرما خواست انجای بتیم که مردم برای فن چی میکنن یا که وقت بیکاری خود مردم در کابل چطور سپری میکنن و قسمت دیگه است که چی مشکلات وجود داره سر جای مردم کابل و مردم افغانستان و قسمت سیومش است که جامعه مدنی و سازمانهایی که در افغانستان فعال هستند چی کار میکنن برای زیکی مشکلات از بین ببرند 
کم کم کوشش کردیم که فیلم ما متفاوتتر از گزارش های باشه که مردم در اخبار و در داکیمنتری های دیگر در مورد افغانستان میبینن ولی هدف ما، هدف کسایی که رانندگی میکنند در شهر کابل است که ما ثابت بسازیم که زنها هم میتونند رانندگی کنند و در زم تشویق کنیم زنهای بیشتر را که سهولتهایی که وجود داره استفاده کنند بله، سرک دارلمان است اینجا اونجا برف باریده سمقبول بالا میشه کنجایی دکه حالا میریم بخیش این هم نبیلا جان است که خاندالان شطور خورده و حالا ما وزی در سرک دارلمان هستیم میریم جگر بیم خود ما شریف های چند بار مزایمت مردم دیدی؟ بروز شنیدی؟ بروز اکچلی یک پولیس بیلده بود که میخواست برای دست مرا قید کرد بود ما بر شارن زدم تا شد چند تا دو زد مرا مگم چیز بود ما هم شیشا رو بلا کردم رفت رفت و این حال هرچی که تا میزنیم زن وقتی که زنا تو را میبینن چه اکس العمل نشون میدن؟ زنا؟ دمو تر که مثلا یک زن را میبینن یکان دخترا طرف خده میکنن، رقم میکنن باز یکان زنای دیگه بد بد سال میکنن میگن که دخترا را چی گفته و متردوانی خود زنا هم اکثر را نطور میگن مگم زیادتر به چیرای خندان برمیخوردم که خوش هستن از اینکه دخترا را میبینن کلان شدی چی میخوایی شوید آینده؟ آینده انجینر رئیس جمهور رئیس جمهور؟ کش هم؟ نه، بلک از امی هر خدا خواست خواه خدا حافظ Sharp, sharp, sharp. Make a sharp. 
دانشگاه کابل اینجا محاوته دانشکده هنرهای زیباست پانزه او در پانزه علوم اجتماعی و هنر هست هم نم پالان میبوست خراب جای میدیم سرفت در نیزه اینجا چی کردیم خراب جای باران داره تیز میبینیم اگر چیز رو شتن خواهیم بگشم بخیر بیری بخیر بیری بخیر بیری خوب نیست؟ بخیر خوب بیری اکس مارو نگی در فیسبوک نمیدازم در فیسبوک نمیدازم وقتی پرزا میگی در یوتیوب میدازم فامیل؟ یوتیوب میدازم؟ یه بسیار خوب بگو دیگه گپتا اگه میتونی بلندتر بگو چی کدا میشه؟ هاش میگی نه شما خیره خو شما میگین خو او خودش باید خب برو ما بگه با چیز از این ما بگه چرا همیشه یک کس دیگه باید با جای یک بیتربیه بگه ایف شما نکرد که از یک بیتربیه نامندگی میکنین باز می از طرف و مزرد میخواین شرم از برد خو بخاطر که این پارک تنها از تو نیست خو سون ما تو رینا که بطور ربطی نداره خو ما در اینجا گپ میزنم خو مش سایکو مشکل پیدا نه خیر است من نه خوار هستم نه مادر هستم که بخوای کدنا شوخی کنم خیر است وانا که از پشت ها تکسیت رو برم بایی برم دیگه بس خطا میشه بزن؟ یا به نظر ما زندگی کدن در افغانستان سخت است بر تمام اقشار جامعه مخصوصا بر زن ها بخاطر از که در افغانستان هر زن که تولد میشه لازی آغاز تولدش تا بلوزه که میموره یا کشته میشه باید که جنگ کنه و به خاطر به دست آوردن کوچکترین حقای زندگیش حقای که باید به با اونا دسترسی داشته باشه باید جنگ کنه مبارزه کنه و خودش بارها بر ملت ثابت بکنه تا که مردم او رو بپذیرن یا ای که به او حق کوچک خود دست بیابه ما در ماه جولای سال 2011 یک گرد همایی بزرگ به زد خیابان آزاری برگزار کردیم که این راه پیمایی دستاورد بسیار بزرگ داشت. دمقا خیابان آزاری سکوت نمی کنیم. خیابان آزاری خلاف قانون است. یعنی که وقتی که یک خانم وقتی تو بیرون ازیت می کنی وقتی که او ازیت میشه و جگر خون میشه یعنی بر تو گناه کلان است. تو وقتی فکر می کنید که من دفعه نصف وقتی که ما مسلمان هستم وقتی دستان آمده که زنان رازر نزیل نباید آمده شمپایل ما شروع شده ما در این قدم میزنگیم داریم میریم حالا جان چی احساس کنیم؟ این که در داخلش نشته کردیم که چه بد است که مردم خیلی میزیری بگی اولین هفته نوی فیروسی بسایی که در فساد دخیل هستن و بلک های حکومتی جان رو برکنار بسازن با ما جوان ها قدرت و دست بگیر نه با خونه کس ها دستیر نه با کس را کشتیر خود بکنیم
از سال 2009 تا به حال ما مصروف برگزاری برنامه های اجتماعی و فرهنگی در شهر کابل هستیم و یکی از مشهورترین برنامه های ما یک کمپین به نام کمپین کابل سبز و پاک است. هدف ما یاداوری مسئولیت های شهروندی به مردم ماست. من می فهم که کل افغان ها یک گپ همیشه می گنن. غیرت افغانی، غیرت افغانی. غیرت افغانی ما من فکر می کنم در این نیست که دخترای ما رو به سواد نگاه کنیم، زنای ما رو خانه بشونیم، جنگ کنیم 24 ساعت در سرا گیر بزن، در راهو را بزن، در پاپ بیا چرز بزن. غیرت است که مملکت خود پاک کنیم، غیرت است که زن و مرد پالوی هم کار کنیم و زحمت بکشیم به خاطر که کل دنیا ما رو بهترین کشور دنیا نگوید. و سلام، تشکر از همه تون. روز خوب. شما هم پاک نگاه کنین سعی؟ بله درسته از بابا رو کی زدم؟ خدا و مثل همیشه هرگاه که ما از خانه بیرون میشیم بر آزار و عذیت ما یکی در بیرون همیشه هست فلم برداری به خطری میگنم که نشان بتونم چه خبه چه افغانستان رو قمی دانن نمی فهم به نزاکت باشن که بیاین براده می تو که یک گفه بزنن بکر کشاد یعنی خوار تو یک روز بیاین کاری رو انجام بده یک فال می بگیر خمکران سرشم می برون سرشم می برون اگر مثل شما باشه مثل ما باشه سرشم می برون خیلی شکر خدا که خوار ندارین شما از من نه تو به یکی آره بارسته خوب است اینی کست سپری مرچه است این رو ما اکثر هم به کت خود میگردونم به خطر ازی که اگر با آزار از یاد بر بخورم کت ازی بتونم که از خود دفع کنم امروز صبحی یک مال خانه بودیم یک دفعی یک صدای بسیار بلند آمد می عملای تاری شده بود در مینه یک قدم رای ما پروسرخ که یعنی ایچ چیز خاص در پروسرخ نیست فکر میکنم مردم کارگر هستن که کار خودم میکنن و دیم و یک قدر چی بود یعنی بحشت آور بود صبحی وقت با یک صدای انفجار نمی سمون بیدار شوی بسیار و این روزا زیاد شده یعنی چند روز پیش میدان هوایی شده بود باز نمی فهم در علاوی انتحاری شد میادم وقتی از خانه میپره این قدر میترسه این قدر استرس داره که نمی فهمی که وقتی که از خانه بر آمدی زنده پس دوباره به خانه میه یعنی که واقعا نامید کننده است نظر و آماری که گفته شده در سال 2002 در افغانستان تنها یک حمله انتحاری صورت گرفته بود و در سال 2003 دو حمله انتحاری در حالی که در سال 2011 ما شاهد 102 واقعه انتحاری بودیم در افغانستان برای ما به خاطر از اینکه ما بتونیم هدف ما را پیاده بکنیم و بتونیم تغییر را در اجتماع خود ببینیم بسیار لازم است که در بین مردم باشیم که ای یک ریسک بسیار بزرگ است و خطر است که ما به خاطر هدف ما میپذیریم ما میخواییم که از سرک شد بگیرم این تعمیره که میبینیم این گلوار سنتر است Sorry, Peter. Can you hear me? You were muted, so that, can you say that again? Yeah. Sorry, I was muted. Let me just say my goodbyes again. Yeah, and we can edit that out. So that was an example of uh, a video letter to Kabul Cards. Uh, the Kabul Cards are teenage girls writing, writing that transition between high school and, and going to college. And they went through the, the, the spiral of care workshop 
before they made this this video letter. And as you, as you saw, they had a few things that they wanted to talk about. So they were in the inner circle, and they were also in the in the uh, the the outer circle. I hope I hope you found today interesting. Uh, there's more things we can talk about when we meet again later in the summer. And until then, uh, be well, and I look forward to meeting you. Thanks. Thanks for today.